what's up everyone? So I'm back in the shop again and we're going to be working on the M5. I've got um, a little project here, some more upgrades for it. Before I do this, I'm going to have to tell you what I have done. I was going to make a, a separate video going over everything I have done and unfortunately I need to do another upgrade before I was able to make this last video. So a little while ago, about two weeks ago, I did a full E85 um, tune on it by Gintani and I've been playing around with it. it felt really good the first couple days but as, I, as time went on I felt it slowly getting weaker and weaker. I knew my fuel it would be pushing it for my stock fuel pumps considering I have 130,000 miles on the car but anyway it's they've, they've become very weak it falls off on the top end really bad so today I'm going to be installing two Walbro 255 fuel pumps and then once we got the fueling sorted out, hopefully I'll be able to make a review video of the full E85 on the E60 M5. Also, if you want to see a dyno of this car running full E85 and catalyst down pipes, if we can hit 500 subscribers by the end of, the, of June here, I will hit the dyno. I got a dyno about an hour away and we can see what she puts down. So if you want to see that, hit that subscribe. Like and comment, and if we can hit 500 by the end of the month, we will hit the dyno and see what she makes. But for now, let's get some fuel pumps put in and see if we get her power back. All right, so the first thing that we're going to need to do here before we start is to disconnect the battery. You always want to make sure you have your battery disconnected before you do anything on the car, especially anything related to electrical stuff. All right. Check, make sure we got our door unlocked. Because we will be working back in here. Next step, we go ahead and pop the trunk. Now, one thing that's always good to do when you have your battery disconnected, so we're going to go ahead and you always want to disconnect the negative side of the battery whenever you're working on your car. So we got a 10 millimeter nut right on top there. Wiggle it a little bit, it comes off. And then just make sure you secure it somewhere so that it doesn't come forward and reconnect. Because it will, by default, want to come forward and connect just simply from the memory the wire has. All right, so we have everything disconnected right now. What you want to do then, just to keep yourself from having any kind of issues, you want to take some kind of a rag or something like that, fold it up and tuck it into the trunk latch area here. You can see this is where your trunk latch right here comes down in here and locks in. So we're going to go ahead and stuff that in there because if for some reason somebody would walk by the car and shut the trunk, we would have no way of opening it because our battery is disconnected. The only exception is you can crawl through the back seats which is kind of uncomfortable and manually pop it by pulling this little loop here which should actually be up like that looks like it's broke so if you ever get locked in locked out of your trunk you can flip a seat down and pull this that is a manual release but that is not near as comfortable as just keeping your trunk open till you're done working all right so we're ready to move on to the next step which is going to be inside the car. So we got our rear seats here. What you want to do is grab a hold under the corner of the seat and pull straight up. It does take a little bit of force. See there, we just give a little bit of a wiggle and a pull, pop right up. You got to work your seat belts through the holes here. And then we can just simply flip the seat cushion forward. I may actually just pull it out of the car for now. Try to find a clean spot for it. All right, I think we'll set it right there for now. All right, so once we got the seat removed, you see we got this mat here along with this grommet. So I went ahead and pulled the grommet out of the mat. Also, actually it's also in through the cap here. That gives us enough room to pull the mat back, exposing the four 10 millimeter bolts holding the uh, the ceiling cap off. So we're gonna go pop them off. 
and then I'll show you the fuel pump underneath. All right, so you wanna make sure that you've got all the dust cleaned up around here so that we don't end up with dust falling into your fuel tank and getting into our fuel system. Once we've got that all cleaned up, we can go ahead and unplug it. What we got here is a sliding sleeve. See here, I got it released, just pulls upward. And as you're pulling, you start wiggling a little bit and the plug should come right off. There we go. See how that is? All right, so now we gotta just simply unscrew this locking ring here. There's a special tool to do it, but I just simply use a, a flathead screwdriver or pry bar and slowly tap around until I get the thing taken off. So let's get that taken off and then we'll be able to pull the fuel pump out. All right, since I've got pretty much everything broken down to where you can see the two fuel pumps in here, here and here, what I'm gonna try to do is get the two fuel lines off of here without damaging them. That way I can reuse them. Uh, what I've taken off here is I've slid the bottom, hat off the bottom. To do that, I had to remove this out of here. You just pretty much Tap this up through there, you can pull this out, the two fuel pump plugs are there. And then we also had the sending, this is the float here that operates your fuel gauge. So you want to be very careful with this. If these little contacts get messed up, your fuel reading will not be, possibly you'll get no reading or a false reading. So you want to be careful not to damage that. So now that we're here, the way these fuel lines are, I can't actually pull it out of the car, which I don't really like. But we're going to have to make do with what we got. So pretty much our only option here, which is not necessarily the smartest compared with considering we're working with fuel, is to heat these lines up. If you get them nice and soft, you can actually carefully pull them off the fuel pump barbs here. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do. See how it goes here. Okay. There we go, got it. If you do it very carefully, you can soften up the line, and then when I reassemble it, I'm going to use a hose clamp on there just as an extra measure. But if you very carefully heat them up, you can normally pop them off. Now, the second one's going to be a little more difficult. Well, Maybe not. Let's see if we can get it there. There we go. Both fuel lines are off. I'm gonna go and stick them through here so we can remember the orientation of everything. And we're ready to go and install our new fuel pumps. Now the reason I try to get these off and reuse them is most times what you'll see on DIYs of a fuel pump replacement, they'll have you use a, the regular rubber fuel line, which would be fine except for most fuel line is not rated to be submerged. So if we can get these off, the bottoms are a little messed up from prying, but up top here we'll still be able to put a hose clamp around there. I'll warm them before I slide them on, and that'll actually cause them to, to shrink around the new fuel pump. So we are ready to go ahead and replace the fuel pumps, which I might make in a separate video. So for now, thanks for watching.
Again, please like and subscribe. And if we can hit that 500 mark by the end of the month, I will go and hit the dyno with this and see what kind of numbers we can put down with the new fuel pumps on full E85. So we'll see you next time.